Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Looks like we're all having a good time visiting, fellowshipping, and now it's time to do worshiping. And there's some music in the background. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. All right, this morning I want to start off just a little bit differently. We have, we have a guest violinist this morning, so I want you to meet him. I've just met him recently, and I would like him just, along with his wife, just to share a little bit about their life, their testimony, um, where they're from, where they're going. So before we get into worship, while you guys are finding your seats and everything, I'm going to ask him to go ahead and, yeah, he can take your mic. You can come on up if you like. So you don't know him yet, but can you give him a good welcome anyway, because you're going to get to know him. Hello, church. Um, thank you, Pastor Scott, for having us. Thanks, everyone. It's our first Sunday service here. <laughs> We're just visiting two weeks from Canada, me and my wife, Leah. And uh, it's an honor to be here. I, I hope to meet as many of you as possible, get to know your stories, too. Uh, it's not just about us. Uh, and everyone has a unique story. But just to summarize, I came from, uh, born in Canada, came from a Persian Muslim background and uh, grew up, became atheist. And when I was 21, I had a miracle from the Lord Jesus. He showed himself to me through a prophecy that came to pass. And it's a very long story, but it's a very quick version. Uh, I started for eight months questioning if God is really there. What about this? What about that? And one day I heard a voice in my heart say, get a Bible and learn about Jesus. We didn't have a Bible at home. We had a Muslim Quran and no one could even read that in my family because it was in Arabic. They didn't speak Arabic. But that was a book they kissed. But finally I went and bought a Bible and started to read about Jesus. I never heard of him like that. This is serious. This is real. And I remember this hunger came to want to one day go out and tell people about it. I was super shy, I couldn't stand in front of you guys, I couldn't play in front of you guys, I couldn't even talk to people in the street. But God really changed my life in that. Uh, I didn't become perfect overnight, I'm not perfect now. We're all in the process to become more like Jesus. So I'm praying he'll make me more into his image daily. I know he's freed me from sin and addictions to sin uh, and uh, lust and all this stuff, the drinking, all the stuff I used to do in my old life. And he brought me here, so it's an honor to be here. And um, Leah will share really briefly her uh, quick testimony. Hey guys, uh, yeah, it's really a blessing to be here. Uh, can you hear me? Um, yeah, we're, we're just we're just so blessed to be here. And uh, briefly, my story. Um, I'm from also Canada, Quebec. Um, and yeah, I, I grew up in a sort of broken family. My mom raised me, and uh, I got exposed to New Age pretty uh, young, at a young age. Crystals and angels and tarot, all, all these things. And um, yeah, it just grew and grew with the years. And um, uh, yeah, around the age of 17, 18, I moved overseas and um, yeah, just got really deep into Hinduism and Buddhism and, and all those things, just look, looking for truth, looking for the real deal and, and why I'm here and what's my purpose and why am I so mis miserable inside. And um, around the age of 19, 20, I decided to start doing the next best hippie thing to do, which is take my backpack and travel the world. And um, my travels led me to Israel four years ago, and um, where I heard the gospel for the first time, read the Bible for the first time. And over a course of three weeks, the Lord just convicted me that this was the truth I've been looking for all my life. And uh, I repented of my sins, got baptized, filled with the Spirit, and my whole life changed. And uh, it's just a brief version. But um, yeah, and, and a year ago, God brought us together, me and Artin. And uh, you want to share? We got married about five months ago. And... Uh... Yeah, God has been stirring us to, uh, <laughs> yeah, God's been stirring us to go, um, actually, I used to work in North Africa with a mission agency, and we're actually returning, uh, we're going to fly out on Tuesday, going back, uh, first time together, uh, to connect with the mission team there. God's been stirring us to go for at least a few months, and Lord willing, we'll move there early next year. 
So if, you, if God brings us on your hearts, please pray for us. Uh, it's a different place, difficult place. This two weeks here has been really amazing, restful, connecting with uh, old friends from Canada and meeting a lot of new people. And I know you guys are full of the spirit and pray, and we'd love for you to pray for us and keep us in that. Um, and Lord willing, we'll be back in the future to share testimonies and to uh, connect with you guys more. So it's a very brief outline. If you have any other questions, you can ask us after. So. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. If, if we could just have everyone stand up before we step out of this. Can we get your name again? Artin. Artin. Kind of like Martin without the M. And Leia. Yeah. Artin and Leia. So let's, let's stay right here in this moment. Stretch out our hands this way. Bless them. Father, we just thank you for Artin and Leia. Thank you that you have called them and you are sending them to tell others about you. We just ask that your angels go before them and open doors that should be opened before them. Close those that they should not go through. Father, let your peace and your protection be with them and around them every day. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, amen. Amen, amen. Can we give God some praise? I don't want to embarrass them, but if you feel led to bless them and give them something, just just find them and bless them with some with some finances, whatever you want to do. They are missionaries, and so that's not that's not an easy step of faith, right? Thank you, Jesus. Let's just close our eyes for a moment. Father, we just look to you. We say this morning, we love you. Can you open your mouth and say that together? We love you. Say that again. We love you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come and have your way this morning. We're so excited to be part of what you are doing. We're so excited to see the change and the growth in our hearts, in our lives. We just pray that you will draw us closer to you. Hallelujah.
Just lift your hands and worship him right now.
understand how great, how high, how deep and wide your love is. Not just to sing empty words, but Father, help us to understand it. Holy Spirit, make it real to our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Ushers, come on up.
shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, a shout for the King. A shout for the King. Glory to God. Amen. Before you sit down, or if you're sitting down, would you stand up and greet somebody this morning? Hey everyone, hey everyone. welcome to Fusion. Thanks for joining us today. We're really glad that you're here. Thank you so much to everybody who came out and helped put the playground together. We got so much done. Even though we got so much of it put together, it's still not quite finished. So I'm sorry kids, you're not allowed to go on it quite yet. We're hoping to get finished up this week so you'll be able to play on it next week. Check out some pictures of all the crew's hard work. We're going to be having a workshop for all the Sunday school teachers here at Fusion on Saturday, July 16th, starting at 9 a.m. The location's to be announced. We'd really appreciate if every teacher that's teaching in the Sunday school classrooms could be at this workshop to learn more important details about teaching Sunday school. Life Change Institute is a three-week discipleship course that's starting again on July 28th. The M of Life Change Institute is for you to know Christ intimately and to know what it means to function as a believer in our day and age. If you'd like to know more information about Life Change Institute and what it is, or if you'd like to sign up for it, please contact Rich Deeds at 665-6868. That's all of our announcements. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Enjoy the service. Good morning, everyone. All right. Uh, children are dismissed. Uh, also, uh, at the end of the at the end of the service, we're going to be showing a slide uh, with all the everything that happened in the youth outing. But that, that will be at the end, so you guys can have a little bit of uh, a sneak there in, into what into what was that, that went on there. Uh, so. After moments like like today in in worship and when. When I get lost in how good God is and how good He is 
to us how good he is to me. Um, sometimes I, I don't even know how to continue, and, but I will try. And, and I, I have this, uh, this uh, in my heart for, for a very long time. And in these past few weeks, uh, I feel like the Holy Spirit has been stirring this, this in, in me more than, than ever. I don't know if it has to do because of circumstances of uh, what is currently happening. But today they asked me, okay, how would I, uh, I titled the, the message for today. So I made up a, a name is uh, A Season of, of, of Blessing. And it may, may sound a little bit like prosperity gospel to you, but um, I want to start saying that uh, you and me, if we are in Christ, we are blessed. And that is the statement that if uh, you leave from here today, if you don't remember anything, that is something that you need to live here knowing for sure in your spirit. Let me start by saying something that is no news to anyone, but today more than ever we live in a time of confusion. And, and, and our culture, it is so confused that even questions what a man and what a woman is and what really life is and if... Uh, a fetus is alive, and, and, and so much confusion that, that you and me, we, we look from the other side, and we're like, how is people getting so dumb? Like, what's going on? But the, the, the culture, society is confused, and it's something that is not new. This is only the result of the curse of people that don't know who their maker is, and therefore they don't know who they are. But for us, the people of God, it shouldn't be like that. We cannot afford to be confused about who we are, but unfortunately, this is happening to a degree in the church. And we have people deconstructing, and we have leaders and pastors that are quick um, to use their social media platform to say their, their, their two cents on the, on the current events and the current, uh, current political debates, but when something like uh, a, a few days ago happened and, and, uh, and Roe v. Wade was overturned, uh, many of them didn't say anything. They kept quiet because many of them don't even know what they think about abortion. They don't know what life is. They're confused. And the, this confusion is the result of a church that's being discipled more by Babylon. Instead, there, there is a, a church that is being guided by apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers, and evangelists who were given to us not for our entertainment, but for the equipment of the saints, the equipment of the church. It is for our benefit. And I am here on assignment today to preach and to teach and to declare the truth of the gospel to remind us who we are. And in light of this, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I will go through a couple of concepts and I will go through scripture to try to bring light and understanding to two, mainly two concepts. Um, that I believe a lot of people are very confused and this confusion is a product of defining such things through the lenses of the culture, but not through the perspective of the kingdom. And my mission is not to accommodate and arrange the gospel to the level of the culture, but is to elevate the culture to, and your understanding to the level of the gospel. And I'm not trying to diminish your pain or your test of your trial but, and, or even your experience. But I'm just saying is that your pain and your experience need to bow down its knee to the truth of Jesus Christ. So we will see in the next 45 minutes or three hours, however it goes. We will see some of these things. And if you and me have repented from who we were, and when I mean repented, I don't mean have said sorry for the things that we did because we got caught. But if you and me have metanoia, if you and me have changed the way we think, we are now in Christ. And I don't care if you grew up in church and in a Christian home and if you went to church twice a week and got homeschooled and never did drugs and got married, being a virgin and your lips never touch alcohol. If at some point in your life you, do, you didn't come to the realization that you were lost and sinful, and that you needed the Son of God to intervene in your mess, I question the degree of your encounter. Those who love much 
is because they were forgiven much. It's the scripture that self-righteous people use when they misunderstand what it really means. And they use it as an excuse to compromise and an excuse for their apathy and for their, la their lack of commitment to Christ. If you and me will only know how sinful we were, how far we are from him, we wouldn't be looking at people in prison and think that we are better than them. Sometimes we need to be reminded that it has nothing to do with what we do, but it has to be everything to do with who he is. It doesn't matter. Listen, listen to this. If you've been born again, not if you repeat, repeat a prayer, but if you have been born of the Spirit, no matter what you are facing, no matter who loves you or who betrays you, no matter if you're rich or poor, smart, or if you consider yourself dumb, if you're healthy or if you're sick or if you're popular or people don't care about you, if you are beautiful or if you have a hard time looking at yourself in the mirror. It doesn't matter if your family is royalty or if you're a peasant, if you went to school or you don't know how to read. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, red, blue, purple, if you're 5, 20, 40, or 9 years old. If you are in Christ, you are blessed. If you are disciplined, if you have lack of it, or even if you have made mistakes and have made some poor choices, and you're still paying for the consequences of it, you are still blessed because everything that it was meant for evil, he can still turn it for good. If you are in Christ, you are blessed. Matthew 5, uh, verse 3 to 12 says like this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven uh, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Ble blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for, their, um, for the, uh, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are blessed not because of what you have. You are blessed because of who you are. You are blessed because of what Christ, because of what God declares over you. Because of, he, of what he says that you are. And we need to get rid of this demonic mentality within the church that says that we are blessed when we have material things. Or when we are blessed only when we're healthy. Or when we are blessed when we're popular and people like us. Here says, and this is not very popular, but blessed you are when people insult you and persecute you and say things against you, not because you're being a jerk, but because you are looking and searching for righteousness. Blessed are you when you decide to live for Christ and your life turns upside down and everything goes up. You are blessed. Blessed are you when somebody in your family is sick, when you lose somebody that you love, when you lose your job, you are blessed. The favor of God is upon you because of what God has declared, not because of your current circumstances. The angel showed up to Mary and said, and, said that, and said to her that she was highly favored, and that ruined her reputation. I dare you to go and say right now that you are pregnant and it was the Holy Spirit and see how that goes. But that was the assignment of God in the life of Mary. And God declared that she was highly favored, that she was blessed. You are blessed because of who you are in Christ. John 9 says, as he went along, he saw a man blind from birth and, says his, and his disciple asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man of his parents, that he was born blind. Neither this man of his parents sinned, uh, said Jesus. 
But this happens so that the works of God might be displayed in him. And this is the kind of perspective that you and me need to have when we cannot explain things that happen in our lives. I don't, like I said, I'm not trying to diminish your pain of your experience of your trial. But whatever you go through, whatever you happen, whatever happens in your life, whatever painful situation, whatever suffering you go through, according to what I see here, doesn't matter if the, it didn't matter if he was blind. It was an opportunity for the goodness of God to be shown in his life. And this is the way that you and me need to be thinking about pain and about suffering. It's simple. It's not easy. But it's simple. Every pain and every hardship in a life is, is got to be seen by us as an opportunity for God to intervene. Because you and me, if we are in Christ, we are blessed. And his favor is upon us. And that has nothing to do with our situation. It has nothing to do with our trial. It has nothing to do with the numbers on our bank account. It has nothing to do with our health. It has nothing to do with our friendships. It has nothing to do with our popularity. Christianity is not a, a, a popularity contest. Here Jesus says that we were going to be rejected because of him. Thanks, Jeremiah. So in the same way, when we see our brother and a sister going through trial, we have to be careful how we measure that. And we right away start saying, well, probably there is sin in their life. Probably because they did this. Probably because they did that. Yeah, probably because their grandpa did this and their grandpa did that. So they're paying for their sin because they have a curse on them. We have to be careful with the things that we say and even that we think. Because the Bible says that the same tool that we use to measure somebody, we are going to be measured by. And we are all quick to say, when we had a problem with somebody and something goes, goes, go, goes wrong in the life, oh, you know, that is, that is what they get because they wronged me, because they did me wrong, because they did this to me. But we forget that many times we were in the other side of the, of the argument. We were, we were in the other side of the problem. And how many times we wish for God to crush somebody that hurt us, that wronged us, but how many times we have been the one that hurt somebody. But God in his mercy didn't crush us. So we have to be careful how we, um, how we judge these situations. Because, like I said, if we are in Christ, we are blessed. And we cannot afford to have a double standard on how we judge the situations of our brothers and sisters and how we judge ours. We are blessed. If we are in Christ, we have everything that we need for life and godliness. And I cannot explain your situation and the things that you are going through, but if you are in Christ, you are blessed. And Ephesians shows us this. I'm going to go through that today and, uh, in the chapter 1 and, and, and chapter 2, and I would like to go through all of it, but because of time... And because I don't want to keep you three hours, I, um, I'm going to only go for the first, uh, first two chapters. And Ephesians says like this, is, uh, Paul starts to write, he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and this, he makes it clear, it's by his will. This is it's not because he wants to be an apostle. To the holy people of Efe, uh, Ephesians, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And he starts praising. And he says, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And this is for you and me. Because here it starts, we start seeing a whole list of the blessings that we have. Because he chose us in him. Before the creation of the world to be holy 
and blameless in his sight. He didn't chose you so you can be popular and you can have a smooth ride in this life. But he chose you so that you can be holy and blameless in his sight. And it says, in he, and in love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one that he loves. He kept on saying, says, in him, and here comes more of the blessings. We have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. And maybe you forgot how it feels like it. But living in sin is not fun. If you remember what your life was before coming to Christ, sometimes God does, God, God does such, such a good work. Not, not sometimes, but always. Such a good work in us that we forget who we were. And we act and we live in a way and we have so much patience and we love so much that we forget how horrible we were. We forget what the, the weight of sin in our life was. We forget what living with shame and what living with guilt and what, and, and what living with the, with, with the weight and, the, and, and what it was to be alive but to be dead is. And we take for granted the forgiveness of our sins. We take for granted the, uh, um, the redemption that God has, has given us. And we think that we're not blessed because we lost our job. Because the business is not doing the way that should do it. Because somebody is not liking us. Because we're sick. Or because simply because things are not going the way that we want. And we forget that we have been redeemed by Christ. That all of our sins have been forgiven. That our very sinful nature has been changed. Without wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach the fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. And here, we keep finding more blessings, and, and Paul keeps on repeating, in him we were also chosen. We didn't get to choose. We didn't, get, we didn't have a saying. All we had to say was yes. All, all, all we had was to accept the gift of grace, the, the gift that God has given us. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In order that we, who were, first, who, uh, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also, this is to us, to the Gentiles, you were include, included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of our salvation. When you believed, you were marked with you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteed our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. Jesus says in, a, in one occasion that if we will ask to our good father, he will give us good gifts. And when he talks about the good gifts, he didn't talk about a house. He didn't talk about a career. He didn't talk about popularity and anything that the world would say is a good gift. He says if you will Ask him, he will give you good gifts. And he says that this good gift is the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit living within you. It is the Spirit that many times you don't even realize is working in you and through you in ways that you ignore. But if you weren't for him, you wouldn't be able to do those things. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit, a spirit that has uh, has allowed you, has made you being born again, that has changed your nature, your selfish nature, your filthy nature. The one that changed who you were. Jesus said, if you are not born again, you cannot enter in his kingdom. He didn't say, if you don't repeat the prayer, if you don't come to church twice a week, you cannot be born again. 
If you don't have the right pedigree, you cannot be born again. If you don't read your Bible half an hour every morning, you cannot be born again. No, if you are born again. And we have a lot of people in the church that know how to speak all the Christianese and know how to lift their hands and when to jump and when want to say God bless you. And they know how to do all of these things. All of these things that seem to have an appearance of life and an appearance of godliness, but never in their life question if they really needed to be born again. They thought that because they were born in the right family and because they came to church and because their parents were, uh, were pastors, then everything was fine. But there's got to be a, a day, like we were singing today, oh, happy day. There's got to be a day that could be a moment, could be a second, when you realize that you need Jesus in your life because otherwise you are going to burn. That you know that you cannot make it on your own. That nothing that you can do is going to make you earn the favor and the grace of God. And we need, we need a revival in the church in these concepts on what we call being a Christian. On what we call being born again. On what we say that is being saved and being lost. On what we call being, being a, good, uh, a good father and a good friend. We need to, 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 to have an overhaul in our minds of what being blessed is. We need to change our metrics and stop, and stop measuring the, 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 uh, how blessed our life is using the metrics of Babylon. Using the met metrics of the system. For the world, everything is numbers, but not for Christ. He doesn't care about numbers. Jesus spent his life with 12 people. He rejected a lot of them. He had the 70s. He had the 12. And purposely he said hard things to make sure who really was committed. And sometimes he will only take three. And the other 12 will stay there. I wonder how the other 12 felt about it. And sometimes he will only let, let, let one of them come with him. At, the, at, at, the, at the, the picture of the Last Supper, we have one man laying on the chest, on the chest of Jesus and the other one's asking him, what, 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 what is he saying? What? And I imagine John in there, you know, laying, laying on, on Jesus and, and as Jesus is speaking and saying all of this weird stuff, they're like, what are you talking? So they, they, they make signs to John. What does he mean? Because he knew there was something between John and Jesus that there wasn't between the rest. There was a knowledge of John. John. John knew God, Jesus, in a way that the rest didn't do it. So Jesus has his 70, his 12, his 3, and he has his 1. And we find in the Gospels that John calls himself the disciple who Jesus loved. Like we were singing today. I am your beloved. And John calls somebody, oh yeah, that was Peter and the disciple that Jesus loved. He knew who he were. He saw himself through the lenses of the kingdom, through the lenses of the Father, not through the lenses of the world, not through the lenses of, the, of his friends, of his family. He defined who he was through the lenses and through, what, uh, and through what God and through what Jesus had spoken over him. And this is our, this is our challenge. We need to stop thinking that we are blessed by the metrics of the world. And we, start, start, uh, we need to start seeing ourselves and our blessing and, and, how, blessed and uh, how blessed we are. And we start, need to uh, recognize the favor of God in our lives by the way the Scriptures show us and not by the way the world tells us to. Paul he, here kept saying, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus... And your love for all, uh, for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Remembering your, remember you in my prayers. I keep, asking, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you everything that you want. Does it say that? No. I keep asking you that the God of our Lord Jesus, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of 
of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. You want to be more blessed? Then get to know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may be popular. No. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to, to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and the incomparable great power for us who believe. And here uh, in the next statement, Paul makes a political statement. During that time, during imperial Rome, people believed that their gods were in the stars. They were there in the heavenly realm. And this is why Paul is using this language. As he starts, says that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and that we are sitting with him in heavenly places. Because for this culture, for this time, their gods or of their idols, they were up there in the stars. And when they were born, they were sent to earth. They were born and you know, those were their heroes. They believed that the emperor was God. But then when they died, they went back up there, back to the stars, back where they belong. So Paul makes this statement. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, and not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Paul here is making a statement. He's trying to make sure that people will understand that Jesus is above anybody else. That Jesus is above the emperor. That Jesus is above every idol, every god, any, any mythology. Because during that time, uh, you, in, that, in that culture, you were popular by doing good deeds, by works, by charity, by helping. Just like you are popular today if you do the same. If you donate, if you give money, if you help here, and if you do all these good things, you are going to uh, obtain a certain amount of, of popularity, of, of people may like you. So Paul is trying to make a statement here that above all of these things, above everything that the culture and the society is trying to feed people, is trying to tell them that they have to do in order to fit in, in order to feel like they are blessed, in order to feel like they made it. He says that Jesus is above all of those things. And then he comes to say that all of those things have been put under his feet and that we are seated with him. At his right hand. We are, we, are, we are above all of those things. Jesus didn't die. Jesus didn't suffer torture. And didn't give you and me redemption. So that you and me settle for money. So that you and me settle for popularity. So that you and me settle for the things that the world is offering us. He didn't die for you and me to have a smooth, happy life. He blessed us with everything that we need for this life. And in this life, we are going to have trials and sufferings and things that we, we might not uh, understand or explain. But beyond all of those things, Jesus is. And Jesus is in us and we are in him. And because of that, you and me are blessed. Now, sometimes it's really hard to understand or to uh, uh, believe and to accept that we are blessed. Where we constantly focusing and thinking about all of our shortcomings and our mistakes. And the things that we still need to improve. And we try, and we, and we try harder to see if we are going to do many good things. To see if we're good enough so we can earn God's favor. But God's favor... And his blessing does not depend 
on who you are, but it depends on who he is. And Paul keeps saying, see, as for you, and this is, this is a, a moment where you and me, when we read this, we need, we need to be aware of, of timing. We need to understand that our life in Christ is our season of blessing. That, that's how I, I titled the, the, the message today. A season of blessing. Your life in Christ is your season of blessings. You might be up and down, but your life in, in Christ is an eternal season of blessing. And it says here, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. If you have been born again, if you have repented, you were dead. You're not dead anymore. You are alive in Christ. And you need to understand that. You need to stop dwelling on your old way of living. You need to stop dwelling on the things of the past because you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. Again, it's in the past when you follow the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the earth. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived past among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy and never runs out of it, made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this, it is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do with works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. For we are God's handiwork, and we've been created in Christ. We have been born again to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. He has given us gifts. He's, he has given us hope. He has given us a new beginning. He has given us a good life. Know that we can fulfill all of our dreams and everything that we want to pursue. To pursue, but so that we can do the works that He prepared in, av in advance for us to do. He has given us all of these things so that you and me can serve each other, that you and me can love each other, and through that love be a witness to those who don't know Him, to those who are living in sins, who, to those who are living in darkness. And that through that love, through that love in action, you and me can shine a light in those who live in darkness. It is important for us to understand that we live in a season of blessing as long as we live in Christ. Our blessing does not depend on our current situation. His love for us does not change. For what we do or what we stop doing. And sometimes I kind of feel bad that I have to explain that, yes, I'm not saying that you have a license to sin. And you have to do, and you have to uh, read your Bible, and you have to pray, and you have to worship. Sometimes I feel bad that I still have to explain because a lot of us still think that when we talk about grace and we talk about uh, the grace of God empowering us and when we, when we talk about that his love does not change, well, we think that people is going to start sinning and we're going to start backsliding. But I tell you over and over again, when you start understanding that you are able to love him because he loved you first, he's going to empower you and he is going to start working things in you that you can know work yourself. I am not a morning person. 
It is not my nature, but it's him in me that helps me wake up in the morning. So before the day starts and before I get busy with other stuff, I can take a moment to reflect in his goodness and to think about who he is and to pray and to read. And if one day it doesn't happen, if that day I die, I'm not going to hell. Because his love and his faithfulness that not depend on my discipline and on my works. It is not by works that I've been saved, but it's by his gift. It is not by what I do, but it's because of who he has declared that I am. Because I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. And I am seated at the right hand of Jesus, far above any authority and any culture and any politician and any businessman and every sickness and anything that people and the devil want to throw at me. Because I am blessed regardless of what I am going through. In the valley, I am blessed. In the mountain, I am blessed. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow and death, I will not fear because I am blessed because He is in me. Because He goes before me, He is behind me, He is inside me, He is by my side. And in the middle of the battle, when my enemies are surrounding me, He prepares a table for me. And in the middle of the struggle, he allows me to feast. He allows me to enjoy. He allows me to rejoice in him. It is only because of the spirit of God inside of me. And brother, friend, you are blessed. Remember that. Whatever your situation is today, whatever thing you are going through, whatever it is what you are trying to defeat, whatever sickness, whatever thing, whatever type of anxiety, whatever type of fear, whatever problems you have in your life, in your relationship, whatever struggle you are going in your marriage, you are blessed because God has declared so. If you have repented of your past life, if you are living in communion with Christ and Christ is in you, you are blessed. Doesn't mean that you're perfect, doesn't mean that I have it all together, but I am blessed. The wrong thing at the right time is the wrong thing. The right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing. Only the right thing at the right time is the right thing. You can be blessed by God, that is a good thing. That is the right thing. But still be living your life as if you were dead. That is the right time. That's why that is the wrong time. That is why it's important for you and me to understand that we are living in a season of blessing. In an eternal life of blessing. And the scripture says that we are going to go from glory to glory to glory. That we are going to go, go from victory to to victory. And may, so many situations in your life might feel like, might, might look according to the standards of the world that you are defeated. But they are a victory. Because he can turn anything for good. Anything that has been meant for evil, he can turn it around. So understanding your timing is, is essential. Understanding that you were once living in transgressions and sins. But now you are living in the light. Now you have been blessed by God. It's essential for you and me to live a blessed life. To, to, to live the life that Jesus died for, for you to live. And that blessing has nothing to do with all of the things that I have already list, li listed. You and me are blessed because Jesus is within us because he has chosen us to be predestined to be conformed to the image of God. My destiny is to be like him. I am not perfect, but that is not the goal. The goal was never perfection. The goal was to be like Christ because perfection changes from head to head, from time to time, from age to age. What today is considered perfect may not, may not be considered perfect tomorrow. But he is the same yesterday, today, and he will be the same in a thousand years, in five thousand years. He does not change. His word does not change. His love for you does not change. The blessing that he has declared over your life has not changed. 
So don't forget how blessed you are that Jesus is in you. That you have access to the throne of the Father whenever you want. Whenever you need Him. Whenever you need mercy, mercy is available. Whenever you need forgiveness, forgiveness is available. Whenever you need wisdom, wisdom is, uh, is available. Whenever you need new strength, whenever you need joy, all of those things are available because Christ, the hope of glory, is in you. You can discipline yourself into this. You receive this by believing what God has declared over your life. You can work yourself into this. Why I can wash away my, away my sin? Nothing but to work for Jesus. That is, that is the way many times we live. If I try a little harder, you can work your way into cleanliness. You can work your way into holiness. You can work your way into salvation. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by what he has done. You can work your way into his blessing. And you cannot work your way into his favor. There is nothing that you will ever do that will earn you that. There is nothing that you can do. That you, nothing that you, why you will deserve it. That is why it's essential for us to understand these two things today. That we are blessed in him. And that our timing it's got to be correct. We were dead in transgressions, but now we are alive. Our old nature has been put away, has been dealt with. And now Christ is in us. And every day we face the temptation to put on the old rags, to put on the old man, to go back to the old ways, or to let God be God in us. So like I said at the beginning, if you don't remember anything I said, remember this. You are blessed because of what Christ is in you. Because who he is and because of what he does through you and in you. So in that same way, wherever you go, with that in your heart and with that in your mind, take Christ with you wherever you go. And because you are blessed, you will be a blessing to others. Amen? Let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to make this not only a lecture or a dissertation or something that I just yelled at you for the last 40 minutes, but that this becomes who we are. That we will finally get these thoughts out of our heads. And that we will change the way we measure our blessings. And that we will finally understand. Or we will move a little forward in the understanding. A little closer in the understanding that we are blessed because of who he has declared that we are. That we are living and that we will be living a season of blessing as long as we remain in communion with Christ. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for... Uh, for your presence in this place. We thank you for your word and we thank you for the anointing that the breaks, the, the yoke of, of bondage. We thank you for your word that, that goes in the deepest part of who we are and that exposes everything that, does, that is not in, accord, in accordance with your word. So Father, I ask you as Holy Spirit that today this word will not only be a bunch of concepts and, and will only be something that we hear today, but that we will live a life according to your will. That we will understand the time in which we are living in. That we were once sinners, but today we are saints. Today we are your people. That you have chosen us in you, that you have uh, redeemed us, you have cleaned us, and that when you looked at us, you see your son. That our sin has been dealt with. That our sin has been forgiven. That our nature has been changed. That we have been born again. And that we are blessed. That no matter what the world says, no matter what the culture says, no matter what the current trend says, we are blessed in you. And in the middle of the struggle, in the middle of the suffering, in the middle of sickness, 
in the middle of grief, in the middle of pain, we may understand and fix our eyes on you that we are blessed. That we are blessed because we have found you. We have found our Father. We have found forgiveness for our, uh, for our sins. We have found redemption. Because we have a spirit that at all moments leads us into all truth. A spirit that makes your fatherhood real to us. A spirit that has sealed our hearts and it has put a seal on us to say that we belong to you. And that our allegiance belongs to you, Jesus. Our allegiance belongs to Christ. Our allegiance belongs to the Father. Our allegiance belongs to the Trinity. And we hold fast to your truth. As we trust that we are held by your mighty hand. Father, I also ask you that whatever the situations, whatever the pain, whatever the struggle any of us is facing today. That we will be taken through. That we will be delivered. That all the breakthrough that, that those, those that are praying for. That those that are praying for a relationship to be restored. Those that are praying for a breakthrough in their business. Those that are praying for a breakthrough in, in, their, uh, in their health. That you, Father, will right now heal them. That you will meet them whatever their needs are. But as until the moment that happens, that you also will give them the confidence and the assurance that you still love them. That if things don't make sense, they're still blessed because you have declared it that way. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We thank you for who you are in us. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing in Fusion, for what you are doing in our lives, for what you are doing in each family, Father. Because we know that as long as we are in your hands, we are safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remember, as soon as you get out of here, that you are blessed. Amen. So I think you will have a slideshow. And uh, I guess after that you will be dismissed. And I want to thank everybody besides the, all of the people that, uh, that helped yesterday with the playground. Everybody that came out helped us de do a, a deep cleaning in the church. Really appreciate it. I had a good time with all of you. Uh, I always love to, to, uh, to talk and to joke around and to, um, and to do God's work to serve each other. So thank you so much.
Joy 